Sometime during the mid-2000s, I found myself at our local Chuck E. Cheese for my brother's birthday. It was the closest thing we had to an arcade nearby, and if you went right when they opened, you could have the entire place to yourself for about two hours. Our Chuck E. Cheese hadn't been updated in a while, so not only did it have many old, rare arcade games, such as the original Star Wars shooter and a Dragon's Lair cabinet, but it still had a stage full of instrument-wielding animatronic mascots, playing for a room completely empty save for my mother, my brother, and myself. During one of these yearly trips, I spoke to a manager who lamented about what the location had to do in order to keep the animatronics running. Replacement parts were scarce, and sourced from other Chuck E. Cheese locations that had scrapped the band entirely. They were loud, outdated, and as other families began to trickle in, it was easy to see that the band no longer captured children's attention the way it used to. Even back then, the days were numbered for Munch's make-believe band. But there was a time when animatronic technology was cutting edge, when people would crowd sidewalks just to hear a bird talk above them, or when children would sit in rapt attention to hear a fake band's latest hit. This rudimentary technology left a lasting impression on a generation of kids, and its impact on popular culture can still be felt to this day. Fun is made for sharing, share the fun at Showbiz Pizza Place. We've got family fun at Showbiz, dating fun at Showbiz, everyone fun at Showbiz. Showbiz Pizza Place, we've got eating fun at Showbiz, racing fun at Showbiz, Showbiz fun at Showbiz, Showbiz Pizza Place. Share the fun, come on and share the fun at Showbiz. In the early 60s, Walt Disney's Imagineers were brainstorming ideas for a revolutionary new restaurant experience featuring hundreds of singing birds. The idea was to create a dinner show that didn't require human actors, and birds, with their movements limited to wings and beaks, seemed like a good place to start. As the attraction continued on through the planning phase, it became more and more intricate, until eventually the decision was made to switch it from a sit-down restaurant to a full-fledged show. It was feared that guests would be so caught up in the birds singing that they would never want to leave. So the Enchanted Tiki Room opened at Disneyland in 1963 and introduced guests to a new invention, audio animatronics. Audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. Ooh. Audio for sound. See, and electronically animated by sound. In order to clarify that the show did not, in fact, feature hundreds of live singing birds, a single parrot animatronic was placed outside the building to greet people as they passed by. This figure was Juan the Barker Bird and he garnered so much attention from guests that he destroyed the flow of traffic in the area. While this eventually led to his removal, he showed the world what this brand new technology was capable of, and Disney wouldn't stop there. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln, the Carousel of Progress, and It's a Small World followed soon after. While Imagineers wouldn't immediately revisit the concept of an animatronic restaurant experience, they definitely paved the way for animatronic technology to become an important entertainment staple, and in the following decade, Two different restaurant chains would throw their hats into the ring in the fight for pizza supremacy. In 1977, in San Jose, California, Nolan Bushnell, one of the co-founders of Atari, opened the first Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theater with his business partner, Gene Landrum. For years, even before Atari was king of the video game world, Bushnell had been toying with an idea for a carnival-themed restaurant. As Atari grew and grew, Bushnell was eventually able to revisit the idea and reframe it as a way to create a child-friendly environment where kids could play Atari arcade machines. Arcades themselves had a bad reputation for being hotbeds of teen crime, and arcade cabinets were also commonly located at unchild-friendly locations, like bars and strip clubs. Bushnell eventually settled on creating a pizza restaurant as kids could play the Atari-branded machines while they and their family waited for their food. But a kid-friendly arcade wasn't enough. Bushnell wanted entertainment, and he wanted entertainment that could run nonstop for hours. Live actors needed breaks. Inspiration struck during a trip to Disneyland, where Bushnell encountered the Enchanted Tiki Room. While most people leave the Tiki Room tired of birds and wanting a Dole Whip, Bushnell had found a solution to his problem. Audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. Up until this point, animatronic shows had been an exclusive part of the Disney experience, but Pizza Time Theater would change all of that. The original characters were designed by Atari artist Bob Flamate and costumed by Harold Gold Branson. Cyan Engineering, best known for engineering Atari's first home console, the 2600, brought the characters to life. Chuck E. Cheese's first mascot was a cigar-smoking rat named Charles Entertainment Cheese, who, according to the Chuck E. Cheese company themselves, was an orphaned rat who helped children celebrate their birthdays to make up for all of the birthdays he missed growing up. The 
first Chuck E. Cheese animatronics were in portrait frames, depicted from the waist up, and their movement was very limited, but with the characters placed all around the eating area high above guest heads, it created an incredibly immersive experience for young and old alike. In 1980, Pizza Time Theater's animatronics were upgraded to a waist-up balcony stage. It was around this time when the chain's animatronic figures became known as Cyberamics. What this actually is amounts to is electronic puppeteering, only instead of having strings, you have button switches and uh, joysticks. I live in, uh, in one place and commute to Fantasyland. They have become real to me. I talk to them. They come in late on their cues. I'll say, well, my, come on, Chucky, you know, or come on, Jasper, you can do better than that. And uh, right, they come back and they do better. They do uh, do better. Yes, indeed. Things seemed to be going all right for Pizza Time Theater as it crawled into the 80s. Bushnell had left Atari, bought the rights to the pizza chain from them for $500,000, and he was now free to do whatever he wanted, which included rapid expansion across the globe. However, it wouldn't be long until another animatronic restaurant would explode onto the scene, aiming to drive Charles Entertainment Cheese mercilessly into the ground. Ha ha, hello all you big boppers, little boppers, and all you crazy cats out there. I'm the wolf man coming at you almost live and in person, direct from on and on blood, the animation capital of the world. It's my distinct pleasure to give you a brief, close encounter of the animal kind with the coolest collection of critters to ever grace your face. I give you racks and stacks of the best on wax with the fabulous wolf pack thighs. In 1978, Creative Engineering, founded by Aaron Fector, debuted a new animatronic show called The Wolf Pack Five at IAPA, the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions. This not only attracted the attention of the show floor crowds, but of hotel franchisor Robert Brock, who had recently entered into a deal with Nolan Bushnell. Bushnell had told Brock that he didn't know about any other animatronic makers on the scene, despite having met with Fector years prior. Seeing an out to his contract with Pizza Time Theater, Brock stuck a deal with Fector to open their own pizza parlor, Showbiz Pizza, in 1980, featuring Fector's fictional band, The Rockafire Explosion. Appearing tonight on three stages at Showbiz Pizza Place, the Rock of Fire Explosion. Summer vacation is really well. Fector's company, Creative Engineering, found itself struggling to keep up with demand as Showbiz Pizza began aggressive expansion. The small company went from 30 employees to 300 almost overnight. They were churning out animatronic shows day in and day out, while Brock controlled the restaurant side of things, pushing to snatch prime real estate out from under Chuck E. Cheese's sniffling rat nose. It soon became apparent that the business was stretched too thin, and profits were not coming in nearly as quickly as they had hoped. It seemed as though showbiz pizza's days were numbered. Then the video game industry crashed in 1983. For years, Atari had been the king of the American video game market, dominating the entire industry and introducing living rooms across the country to home video game consoles. But a lack of quality control within the company, as well as dozens and dozens of copycat systems flooding the market, caused the entire thing to crash. Bushnell still had a lot of assets tied up with his old company, and with the major losses he faced during the crash, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater was forced to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1984. Showbiz Pizza, despite going through their own financial struggles, swooped in and purchased the company soon after, ballooning their locations to a whopping 359, some of which were right across the street from each other. Showbiz eventually closed 100 locations and halted the continued manufacturing of new Rockafire Explosion animatronics. This led to a soured relationship with Aaron Fector, who found himself faced with losing the rights to his characters or walking away from showbiz entirely. He chose the latter. This resulted in all showbiz pizza locations rebranding to Chuck E. Cheese locations and a company-wide transformation of the existing Rockafire Explosion animatronics into a new Chuck E. Cheese-themed band. This was a process known company-wide as concept unification, in which the existing props and skins were removed from the Rockafire Explosion characters, leaving them no more than a skeleton of tubes and metal. Over the course of a week, the stage was refurbished and new details were added back to the skeletons. If you've ever been to a Chuck E. Cheese with the full-bodied animatronic band featuring Charles Entertainment Cheese, Helen Henney, Jasper T. Jowls, Mr. Munch, and Pasquale P. Pie Plate, you're likely in an old showbiz pizza place. Chuck E. Cheese and showbiz pizza paved the way for other companies, aside from Walt Disney, to try their hands at animatronic entertainment, and during the 80s and 90s, a lot of copycats arrived on the scene. One notable one was Bullwinkle's Restaurant, featuring the classic cartoon characters Rocky and Bullwinkle, as well as Dudley Do-Right and Underdog in the early years. These shows were installed at Family Fun Centers, a chain of entertainment complexes that originated in the 60s. 
Today, very few of these shows remain in operation, and all of them have been downgraded from their original versions. Another notable example, especially because its concept is something wholly different from an animal-infested pizza parlor, is Rainforest Cafe. The first Rainforest Cafe opened in 1994 at Mall of America, and it was a rainforest-themed sit-down dining experience that featured very rudimentary animatronic animals. This included monkeys hanging from the ceilings, a gorilla, a boa constrictor, an elephant, and an alligator located in a wishing pond out front. Also in the gift shop of most rainforest cafes is Tracy Tree, a talking tree with a face that awakens and shares facts about rainforest conservation when people pass by. These figures are nowhere near as complex as those found in Chuck E. Cheese restaurants, but they serve their purpose in immersing the guests in the rainforest while they dine. In the 90s, Chuck E. Cheese narrowly managed to come out on top again, emerging as the victor of the children's play place wars, beating out its competitor Discovery Zone, as well as Disney and McDonald's brief forays into the market. And through it all, Munch's make-believe band played on. However, beginning in 1998, new Chuck E. Cheese locations would include only one animatronic character, a more modern version of Charles Entertainment Cheese, accompanied by a television screen. As the old 80s technology began to break down and upkeep became more expensive, more and more Chuck E. Cheese locations began retiring their rundown band, and while new show tapes continued to be distributed to locations that still had the old figures, the end was quickly drawing near. In 2014, Scott Cawthon, a small-time independent video game creator, released his latest project, Five Nights at Freddy's. The game, which takes place in a Chuck E. Cheese-like pizza restaurant, features an animatronic band of its own. However, this game was a horror game, and the player a night watchman trapped in a small, cramped office trying to survive the night as the murderous animatronics attempted to break inside. The mechanics are deceptively simple. The player hops through different security feeds, closes the doors when the animatronics are near, and keeps one eye on the power meter at all times trying to survive until 6 o'clock in the morning for five whole nights. The game managed to catch the attention of prominent YouTubers, and after that mainstream popular culture, animatronics were suddenly well-known again, but as horrific murderers. Not at all the kind of image Chuck E. Cheese wanted to convey. Perhaps related to the Five Nights phenomenon, though the company has never verified this, Chuck E. Cheese made the announcement in 2017 that they would begin phasing out the animatronics entirely, replacing them with a large dance floor. This initiative was part of an overall restructuring, which included replacing tokens with play passes, making birthday packages more affordable, and trying to entice adults to use empty tables as a workspace with coffee and free Wi-Fi. Aaron Fector is still roaming around his sprawling warehouse of old deteriorating animatronics, surrounded by the ghosts of his former employees. While he was never able to propel the rocket fire explosion to the heights he wanted to when he walked away from showbiz with their rights, he now programs new shows for restaurants and theme parks, as well as posts videos of his own. Animatronics from his warehouse were used in the background of the Key and Peele movie Keanu, including the melting moose, the thing of my absolute nightmares, and the rock of fire explosion performed alongside CeeLo Green for his Las Vegas show. Hardcore fans of animatronics worked tirelessly to preserve them, hunting down and refurbishing those that had been damaged, learning how to program new shows, and collecting videos and merchandise from these almost forgotten characters. It's a niche hobby, but an important form of preservation for a technology that is slowly dying out. Technology comes and goes. And unfortunately, as the years pass, animatronics become rarer and rarer, with even large theme parks for growing animatronic figures in lieu of screens. Hologram technology, which allows thousands of people to cheer on fictional Vocaloid idol Hatsune Miku, has become incredibly impressive. With a vast number of cheaper alternatives available, animatronics have become a novelty, an intentional statement instead of a convenient solution. Oh, hey. It's been brought to my attention that there is a somewhat animatronic woodsy out there, and he is only $10,000. So I'm going to need $10,000 immediately in order to purchase this bird. Here's my cash tag. Don't actually give me $10,000. Unless... <laughs>